So that got you reinvited to the uh, conference year after year, I guess. No, it didn't. It, it didn't. didn't. <laughs> they were just like, don't invite this guy again. He's getting <laughs> correcting I'd stuff. Yeah. Uh, It's all well and good to uh, to look at these things, but we, we might want to go there as well. And this is something else that I've seen that you not you like to you like to have a little bit of a hand in. Um, and in one of these instances, you even did a correction to uh, Uncle Albert's maths, <laughs> which I saw. So tell us a little bit about the uh, the Starshot project and and how you ended up correcting Einstein on his maths. <laughs> well. Yeah, I don't want to blow that out of proportion because it, it's. I'm blowing very... out of proportion for you. And then we'll it's a very you minor, can bring it very back minor in. Correction. Yes. We're not proving. We're not proving Einstein wrong. No, in, we're in, not. In, we're not ripping up special relativity. We're just no, saying no. one of his back of the back, back of calculations was done wrong. In yeah. Calculation. yeah. Uh, so yeah, I got it. I got involved in this because. Um, uh, Yuri Milner, who's this Russian billionaire who lives in Silicon Valley, has been holding these meetings called Breakthrough Discuss, where he invites people, uh, it's invitation only, to, to come to his, his house, actually, for a party and, wow. and to a meeting um, and talk about interstellar flight and, and related topics. So one year I got invited, and I didn't really know why I'd been invited, to be honest, because I hadn't read anything about interstellar mm -hmm. travel at that point, but I was obviously flattered to, to go. Um, and so I thought... Hey, I, I'm not going to turn up without anything. I'm going to think about this problem, maybe do a few calculations before I go. So I, I went you into were just it. like, I don't want to be like, I don't, I don't want to be that guy at the party who yeah. nobody wants to talk to. I brought some yeah. work. Here I am. I I'm ammunition. a serious guy. Yeah, I need some ammunition for this yeah. thing. Yeah. Um, and uh, I, I got, I, you know, br brushed off the old special relativity textbooks and all that from, I literally hadn't touched that since being an undergrad. You know, so it was, I'm not like an expert on special relativity or anything, but I, I brushed it off, went through the calculation. And I guess the, the beauty of being uh, an outsider is that you don't necessarily accept always the standard way. It's, you just, I just tried to figure it out myself. And so the way I ended up deriving it turned out to be different to the way um, that, that Einstein kind of thought about it a little bit. Well, I guess and, in many ways, Einstein sort of did a similar thing in, in going, do you know what? I'm just going to. I'm just going to assume the speed of light's the same in all frames and, and just and just try. So yeah. Sometimes being that outsider to a problem or trying something new is is the way you make a new discovery. Yeah, yeah, I totally believe that. Yeah, I think I think fresh perspective. I mean, that's why that's why young people, young graduate students, often tend to have the best ideas because mm. they're just not corrupted by yeah. the way things are supposed <laughs> to be. Yeah, like, they just totally. I love the mavericks who come in. Yeah, yeah. Um, so I guess in this case. Um, uh, here's the physics of it. So we're talking about a mirror and light just bouncing off a mirror and trying to calculate how that mirror moves in response to that. And that's really what Breakthrough Starshot is. They want to do a, not a solar sail, but a light-driven sail, they'll probably use lasers, to push this thing along and accelerate it up to you know, 10, 20% of the speed of light. And so I was looking at that calculation, and uh, in the 1905 paper that, you know, the original special relativity paper that Einstein wrote. In, in this calculation, uh, Einstein uh, assumed, uh, he did this, what's called a Lorentz transform. So that's like when you uh, transfer the frame of reference. So I mean, that's kind of the whole idea of relativity. Yeah. You see it from another perspective. Yeah. So you've got this mirror, which is moving really fast and a light beam catches up with it and bounces off it. So what he did is said, I'm going to look frame transfer into the reference frame of this mirror. So and the then mirror, I'm gonna, so the mirror looks stationary. The mirror is completely stationary in its own reference frame. Yeah. And then I'm going to just make a photon do this and, and come back. And what he assumed in order to sort of solve, you, you know, when you solve equations, you always want these like uh, conserved quantities, yeah. like energy or momentum or something. His conserved quantity really was frequency. He assumed that the frequency of reflection would be the same as the frequency of incidence, that the frequency doesn't change. And I guess that's intuitive. You know, when you look in a mirror on the wall, seems intuitive to assume that. Yeah. Um, and it's actually kind of not a terrible assumption to make if the mirror has 
much more mass than the photon. Yeah. Now you probably think with the mass, the photon doesn't have any mass, but it, it kind of has um, an equivalent uh, mass in terms of its energy that you can you can. So, carry. He, so he's done energy. the old trick that they do in the in the physics textbook, which is you fire a photon an infinite mass mirror. Exactly, just, it's yeah. infinite mass mirror. Yeah. So and that's pretty much what Einstein assumed. And then if it is an infinite mass mirror, that's legit. That's the right thing to do. But that's the exact opposite of what Starshot's trying to do. They want to have a really light sail that's going to be accelerated hard as a result of that light pressure. So I just relaxed that assumption and conserved energy momentum um, and went through the calculation and saw how big a difference it was. And it was non-trivial. So I, I wrote a little paper about that. And that gave me something to talk about at the meeting, I suppose. That's awesome. Right. So the photons actually, for, for those who are, who are watching, the photons actually have a little bit of momentum of their own. So when they ping off this mirror and bounce back, the the mirror has to recoil slightly, which is a, exactly the idea behind Starshot. It gives it its push. And Einstein's assumption that the, the mirror didn't move is not what Starshot want in their uh, spacecraft, because otherwise it's just going to sit there above the Earth and go yeah, nowhere. Exactly. It can't move from stationary. It, with, with those equations, it can't ever get going. Yeah. So that's that's kind of a problem, right? So yeah. Um, yeah, the whole the whole principle doesn't really work when you have an infinite mass. I mean, which makes sense. Why an infinite mass mirror, of course, will not accelerate anywhere. It has infinite mass, has infinite inertia, so it can't move. And, so, and I, and I think the changes that you did to, to that back of the envelope calculation that Einstein did it it reduced the energy required for Starship by about ten percent in, in the theoretical. Yeah, so that was what I put in the um, in the video I made and in the first version of the paper I made. Yeah. And actually, then someone from the Starshop team contacted me, and uh, they uh, they they pointed out that actually I had not accounted for the retardation time, as it's called, of the actual time it takes light to make the journey to the to the mirror. Uh, and that's true. I hadn't really thought about that too much, so I included that in, and that's in the. Um, the, the final version of the paper. Oh, very nice. Um, so it is, it is still less energy, but it's not as dramatic as it was before. It's a just, it takes a little bit less. Or another way of thinking about it is that if you accelerate, assuming Einstein's equation, you use that formulaism, you would basically miss your target. Yeah. Um, you'd, you'd push it uh, too slowly, and it wouldn't get there in time. And remember, this planet's in orbit, right? So you have to kind of hit it at the right moment in time. And the whole star system is actually moving yeah. around in space as well. And you, once you've accelerated it, that's it. It's like a push, and it's yeah. just going to yeah. drift towards its target. So, so um, if you're off way, even a tiny uh, bit, there's no way yeah. you're, you're hitting your target. So another way to think about it, when you actually correct for all these retardation effects, is that the, the actual difference is about, um, for the star shot calculation, is about four Earth radii you would miss wow. the planet. Right? Wow. Um, so you, it, it, it's, it's a small effect, but it, it builds up and it, it becomes quite Particularly yeah. if, if it's further away, I guess you're getting more off course all of the time. Yeah, so, and the faster you go, the bigger this. I mean, this correction is really small at 20% of the speed of light. But when you get to like 95% of the speed of light, this is a dramatic difference yeah. between these two. Yeah. Amazing. So that got you re-invited to the uh, conference year after year, I guess. No, it yeah. didn't. It, it didn't. didn't. No. They were just like, don't invite this guy again. He's getting <laughs> correcting Einstein. Yeah. yeah.